Hi, Odyssey Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy drama movie named Miller's Girl. It all began with Cairo, a teenager who was left alone in her parents' big house in the Tennessee countryside. Her mom and dad were fancy lawyers who were always traveling for work, leaving Cairo to take care of herself. Every morning, Cairo puts on her favorite tall boots, a short skirt, and walks confidently through the woods to school. She feels like she owns the place. When she gets to class, Mr. Jonathan Miller, her teacher, is there. He's a middle-aged man who seems a bit sad because his dream of becoming a famous author didn't come true. Cairo doesn't just see him as a father figure, she has a little crush on him. Cairo usually got to class before the other students. One morning, Jonathan praised her for being early and suggested she start reading the books for the semester. Cairo smirked and surprised him by saying she had already read all twelve of them. They talked about books like they were experts until Cairo's friend Winnie, who was repeating the grade, arrived. Winnie pulled Cairo away to the cafeteria, leaving Jonathan alone to glance at the books on Cairo's desk. Suddenly, Jonathan's friend Boris appeared, grabbed the book Jonathan was reading, and started playfully reading a steamy passage out loud. Jonathan attempted to quiet Boris before he reached the inappropriate parts, but Boris kept being silly. That's when Boris noticed one of Jonathan's own published books in Cairo's pile, a book Jonathan didn't know Cairo had. Jonathan was surprised and impressed. Later, when Jonathan got home, his wife Beatrice was focused on her computer, as usual. He tried to chat with her, but she was too absorbed to really respond. Jonathan then tried again to get Beatrice's attention to share his excitement about one of his students showing interest in his writing. While they were talking, Beatrice's co-worker Amy called urgently. After the call, Jonathan flirted with his wife and they had a couple of drinks together. They started getting closer, about to become intimate, but Amy's call interrupted them once again, leaving Jonathan feeling unsatisfied and tense. The next day, Jonathan complained to Boris about how his weekend was ruined by Amy's interruptions, which killed the mood with Beatrice just when things were getting exciting. Boris teased Jonathan about the whole situation, then talked about his own dull life for a bit. As they chatted, they noticed Cairo coming out of the nearby woods. Jonathan, still feeling tense from the day before, couldn't help but stare a bit as she approached. But Cairo didn't notice anything strange, just giving them a friendly smile after taking off her headphones. Still feeling tense from earlier, Jonathan attempted to appear relaxed by engaging in casual conversation with Cairo. However, when Winnie claimed she accidentally dropped her stuff, Boris saw through the obvious lie. He approached and asked what she really needed, sensing her intention to grab attention. Catching on, Cairo told Winnie she was being bold. Winnie then attempted to offer Cairo some ideas for an essay, but Cairo found them uninteresting. Unexpectedly, Winnie suggested that Cairo flirt with teachers to gather material for her writing. Cairo looked at her confused pointing out the significant age gap, which seemed a little odd to her. But Winnie, always supportive, reassured her that everything would be okay. She mentioned that Jonathan seemed like a kind, considerate person, making him a good choice for Cairo's first experience. Winnie suggested that Cairo might feel more comfortable with someone older, rather than a younger person who might lack experience. She explained that Cairo desired a mature partner, someone experienced and understanding, to ensure a positive experience. Even though Cairo was unsure at first, Winnie's playful encouragement sparked her curiosity. Winnie continued teasing, mentioning how Jonathan often noticed Cairo, which made her blush. As the days passed, Cairo couldn't shake off her thoughts about everything. Her curiosity grew overwhelming, and she started longing to experience it. During class, her gaze often drifted towards Jonathan. One day, he discreetly approached her from behind and whispered for her to meet him in his office after the bell rang. In Jonathan's office, he was chatting with Boris and invited him over for dinner, which Boris accepted. Cairo happened to see Jonathan's dance moves, and after Boris left, Jonathan jokingly showed off some of those moves to her. They shared some laughs, and then they began talking about Winnie. Jonathan expressed his approval of their close friendship and asked about Cairo's living situation. The teacher congratulated Cairo on her recent excellent writing, impressed by her ability to recall certain phrases and recognizing her talent. He then challenged her to write a short story in the style of her favorite author, saying that if she succeeded, she would pass the semester. 
Cairo eagerly agreed, and then unexpectedly surprised him by revealing she had read his published books. She recited a line from one of them, leaving Jonathan delighted. He confessed that the book she mentioned was his first published work, making it extra special to him. Jonathan admitted that he hadn't written anything new in a long time, explaining that since getting married, his life had been pretty ordinary, lacking inspiration for a new book. Cairo encouraged him, suggesting that he just needed to find that creative spark again. She challenged him to start writing once more. Jonathan took her suggestion to heart and invited her to meet up that weekend to discuss her short story idea further. At their meetup spot, Jonathan sneaks up behind Cairo, surprising her. As they chat, he mentions how they've been working on honing their literary skills together for a while now. There's a poet named Elliot performing, and Cairo keeps stealing glances at Jonathan while he listens intently. Later, they critique Elliot's poetry, exchanging thoughts and opinions on it. Cairo offers Jonathan a cigarette while she's smoking, and he accepts. On a new school day, Cairo decides to change her look. She brings coffee for Boris and Miller, and they all seem much more confident as they joke around together and share a cigarette. Cairo tells Winnie that even though the professor didn't say anything about her new look, she could totally tell he was into it. Later, Cairo tells Miller that she wants to write her story in the style of Henry Miller, the famous author known for writing a lot about love and sex. Miller is a bit concerned, saying it might not be a good idea since it could cause trouble at school. However, Cairo thinks it would just make her story way more interesting. After thinking it over, Miller decides to trust Cairo and allows her to go ahead with the plan. Jonathan's phone buzzes with a text from his wife, inviting him on a weekend getaway. Cairo approaches to discuss her short story, but he's too preoccupied thinking about his wife. He quickly approves Cairo's writing without really considering it. When they're alone, Winnie starts teasing Cairo, joking that she's trying to seduce their professor. She exaggerates Cairo's actions, making her friend laugh. Cairo is searching frantically for her missing phone while Jonathan keeps getting interrupted by persistent calls from Amy about their postponed weekend trip. Surprisingly, it's Cairo's voice he hears when his phone rings. She accidentally put her phone in his bag. As they're talking, his wife is becoming increasingly frustrated about their delayed getaway. Jonathan volunteers to return Cairo's phone to her house and quickly agrees, despite the incoming rain. As he's heading there, a crazy downpour starts. When he arrives, he spots Cairo walking outside in a sexy, seductive dress in the pouring rain. They lock eyes and share this intense, heated moment as she approaches him in the rain. Overwhelmed with passion, they embrace and share a deep, passionate kiss. After the intense moment, Jonathan can't get Cairo out of his mind. Out of the blue, Cairo sends Jonathan her midterm test, snapping him out of his Cairo-induced daze. Jonathan's wife, busy with other things, snaps at him, telling him to wake up and leave her alone already. Feeling a need for space, Jonathan heads off to a small house nearby. Jonathan prints out Cairo's finished work and immerses himself in it. The story is captivating, with mature themes, and he finds himself getting excited as he pictures Cairo in those scenes, igniting his desires. Unable to resist any longer, he turns to his wife for release. The next day, Cairo arrives in class dressed provocatively, but Jonathan's demeanor towards her has noticeably changed. He doesn't greet her as warmly as before. Sensing the shift, Cairo asks if everything is okay. Jonathan expresses his disappointment regarding the explicit content of her writing. He elaborates that although her storytelling is engaging, the explicit themes in her writing surpass what is deemed appropriate for a school assignment. Jonathan feels uneasy about grading it and is concerned about the message it might convey to other students. Cairo attempts to explain that she didn't actually include any explicit content, but Jonathan isn't receptive. He outright refuses to listen to her and decides to reject both her work and whatever connection they had. Jonathan even criticizes her work, expressing regret for trusting her. When Cairo tries to convey her true feelings, his refusal to acknowledge them only infuriates her further. She snaps at him, calling his own works average and dull. Her frustration builds, and she dares him to fail her. Cairo becomes extremely angry and starts criticizing Jonathan harshly but he remains firm about their professional relationship as teacher and student. She retaliates, suggesting that he's simply envious because he can't achieve what she did. 
After this tense confrontation, Cairo storms out and leaves her story in a mailbox designated for administrative purposes. Later, Miller is at home discussing Cairo's narrative with his wife. It explores a challenging situation involving a teacher and student, including significant personal developments for the student. While Cairo is upset about Miller not choosing her, she's drinking with her friend Winnie. As they keep drinking, they start feeling playful. They joke about taking pictures to tease Boris and add some fun to their night out together. Suddenly, Jonathan receives a call from the principal's office. Beatrice gives him the phone, and they accuse him of having a wrong kind of relationship with Cairo. Jonathan tells Beatrice that it's all untrue, reassuring her. But Beatrice warns him about the serious consequences he could lose his job and even her if the accusations turn out to be true. The next day, Cairo doesn't show up for class because she's meeting with the principal. Jonathan continues teaching, but Winnie looks visibly shaken by Cairo's absence. After class, Winnie approaches Jonathan, expressing how much Cairo means to her. However, Jonathan remains emotionally distant, refusing to engage in the conversation. As Cairo's plans unfold, Jonathan gets called for a meeting with the school management. Both Cairo and Professor Miller face a barrage of questions about their interactions in class and if they had any close encounters outside of school. Cairo's responses strongly suggest that there was a connection between them, leaving the professor worried about his professional future and reputation. He's in a tough spot because of what Cairo said. Finding Cairo's statements consistent, the principal decides to suspend Jonathan. Boris approaches him after leaving the office, expressing his disappointment. He advises Jonathan to be careful of his boundaries to prevent making things worse. After delivering the message, Boris leaves to give Jonathan some space. When Jonathan gets home, he tells Beatrice about the suspension, but at first, he avoids admitting what happened. He finally confesses that he had feelings for Cairo after Beatrice keeps pushing him. Their conversation escalates into hurtful arguments, and Beatrice storms out, expressing her desire for a divorce. Meanwhile, Winnie talks to Cairo about the potential consequences of her actions, warning that it might cost Jonathan his job. However, Cairo brushes it off, seeing it as her biggest accomplishment. She even includes it in her college essay. Cairo explains to Winnie that she sees this as payback because Jonathan never respected her. Cairo's essay vividly portrays the looming consequences of Jonathan's involvement with her. As she finishes writing, that's where the movie ends. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.